Now we're moving right along in the metin of Al Ajur Rumiya. That was our taking a step back, yani a step down from Qatrun Nada to more basic text. Maybe you can feel uh, relief of tension here in the approach of this text. So let's look at what he said from the top of the paragraph. قال المؤلف رحمه الله said the author may Allah have mercy upon him اسم وفعل وحرف جاء لمعنى a noun, a verb, and a particle that came with the meaning that's a follow-up from what he said right before that وأقسامه ثلاثة its divisions are three so then he told us Ismun wa fi'lun wa harfun ja'a li ma'na Then he told us Falismu Falismu Yu'arafu bil khafub The ism, the noun, the nominal The Arabic noun It is known by khafub, genitive case State of jar Wa tanween And by nooning, nooning the, the, the word, putting a noon on the end of the word, attaching an extra noon that's not written, only pronounced. Uh, which, by the way, to remind you, Nahu is what it is verbal science. Nahu regards what is pronounced, not what is written. Tanween is pronounced, it's not written. Yani, the noon that is. And the prefixing of the alif and the lam. And the prepositional particles. And that's where we are now. So he says, Wahi, and they are. Yani, those prepositional particles are. Now, perhaps you have a question here. If you're trying to understand those words on your own, not only relying on me translating, but you're looking there and you're trying to see, for example, how does my translation work? So maybe you have a question there. Uh, if you don't pose it, then maybe if I remember, I'll come back and say something. So, and they are... So let's read them all first. Min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba wal ba wal ba wal kafu wal lam wa huruf al qasam. Let's pause there. So. وهي من وإلى وعن وعلى وفي ورب والباء والكاف واللام وحروف القسم. So you should memorize that very nicely. That's not all of the huruf jab, but that's sufficient for you. Yeah, and you really you should be committing the whole metin to memory. That's why it's so basic like that. وهي and they are. Mean wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba wa al ba'u wa al kafu wa al lam wa huruf al qasam. So huruf al khafu, those are huruf al jar. You know what those are. I'm saying prepositional particle. Uh, I'm not going to just say preposition only because. Uh, Arabic language has Dharf Like you learned about Dharf zaman and Dharf makan These Dharf If you compare them to what's in English They are yani, They would translate into Prepositions Usually But these are not particles Dharf are asma, Not particles and there is some commonality between dhuruf, yani dhuruf, 
and Harf Jaro. It's like they're distant cousins or something. So prepositional particle. Wahiyamin. So he starts listing them. The most famous ones. Mean usually is going to translate as from. But all of these, you don't want to just merely find one standard translation for them. Not just these particles, all particles. If you want to understand huruf in Arabic, you need to understand their abstract meanings. Not just to find some word to translate it into. Abstract meaning is like when you say min, they say min means a starting point. Amongst its meanings, in fact, amongst its meanings, not just that's what it means. I did intend to review for this lesson. Maybe we'll repeat. Let's see, because huruf jar. I think it's very fascinating uh, the meanings of these things and how they translate. But I didn't review, so we're going to keep it simple then. Mean, amongst its meanings is being, yani, is alibtida, starting point, from, but it could translate other ways because it has other meanings. Wa'ila, that means ending point so two to but has other meanings all of these have other meanings and their meanings are interchangeable huruf jar are interchangeable you can use some of them with the meaning of others wa'an an means uh, it's usually going to translate as from. This one I wanted to review also, in particular. So I could explain very well, what's the difference between an and min? There's a difference between these. And maybe sometimes they intersect in meaning. Mm. So, wa'an, wa'ala, ala means ascendancy. So it's going to be on or over, but could mean other things. Wa fi, fi means envelopment. So in. Wa rub, if I stop on sukun, so there's a shadow on this bat here. In Arabic, you stop on a sukun. So then, since ba is a qalqala letter, I'm going to make a qalqala. Warub. Rub is for expressing the meaning of many or few. Many or few. We'll see, inshallah. Well, ba and the ba, like when you say Bismillah, that ba right there, in the name of Allah has many meanings. The ba has many meanings. Well, kaf, kaf means like. Yani, kaf has meaning of similitude. Well, lamb and the lamb has many meanings, such as uh, entitlement, and has other meanings. So, for. Wahuruful Qasam, and the swearing particles, or particles of swearing, that's ibafa. And the particles of swearing. So first thing, let's take examples. 
So, here's some space. So, he told us, what well, he yeah, mean? Mean. So, you say, for example, kharajtu min albayt albayti why? because of min kharajtu means I left kharajtu I left min from albayt the house Albaiti, mean Albaiti. So you can't say mean Albaitu, mean Albaita. It would be such a blunder. I don't think people mess up Jar a lot. You're gonna mess up Rafa and Nasr mostly. Min wa ila. So you say, for example, the hab to ila asuk. Asuki. The hab to I went. I went the hab to ila to asuk to the market. Or should have given you the example. وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقُ Wash your hands. إِلَى to الْمَرَافِقُ The elbows. مِنْ وَإِلَى وَعَنْ Say for example. رَمَيْتُ رَمَيْتُ سَهْمَ Anil Kaus Rameitu Asahma Anil Kausi. So, do you see what's going on there? Rameitu I Rama shot. Here it's going to mean I shot. She might say, I throw. That's why an Arab would say in English something like that. Because it's translating in his mind. When he threw the arrow at him, for example. And he should have said, when he shot the arrow at him. I shot as-sahma, the arrow. So, it's clear for you, inshallah, that uh, this verb of shooting is influencing this noun here that we knew is an Arabic noun because it has Alif Lam on there. That's Maf'ul B, so it needs to take uh, Fatha. It needs to take a Fatha because it's a Issa Mufrad, because it's a singular noun. Different type of noun is going to take a different sign, like a ya, yeah, for example, or something else. Rameitu sahma, I shot the arrow anil qaus from the bow. So an here means I'm translating it as from, but I don't have the words to say. Like I said, for min, min means uh, aliptida. You might say, "What? what how, how are you saying it like that?" Min means ibtida, starting. Just like you say, "Hal" means sual, question. That's what I mean when I say, "Don't just look for standard translation if you want to understand these particles. Rather, look for their meanings. How did the scholars explain what is that?" How did they explain it in their own language, in Arabic? So, an 
inshallah I'll review and get back to you bi idhnillahi ta'ala min wa ila wa an wa ala so here's example for ala the saying of Allah ta'ala ar rahman ala al arsh istawa ar rahman so marfu' Uh, على العرش على is حرف جر العرش is a majroor because of على you know it's ism because it's in genitive case you know it's ism because it has al الرحمن على العرش استوى just cast on that sheen عرش then here you're gonna go right through the Hamza to Wasl. And then you have a scene there. Ala al Arshi Stawa. you have a scene there. You have a scene there with Sukun. Ar Rahman wa ala al Arshi Stawa. Min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi. So, fi, for example, you say, the khaltu fi fil bait. I entered in the house. I entered in the house. But you could just say in English, I entered the house. So, fil bayti min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba. Rubba is for a lot or for a little bit. So, for example, the khaltu ila al bayt. Adatan, people say the khaltu ila al bayt. Hakada. So then that's me being a foreigner, not perceiving that. Subhanallah. Or just not being a salik, a saliki. That's interesting. Okay. Barakallahu feek. Uh, yeah. So, Rubba. Here's an example. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rubba. Qa'imin. Havuhu. Min qiyamihi Havuhu min qiyamihi At-ta'ab Okay And there's more to this hadith You don't have to write the whole thing Al-hadith, etc So here Rubba Qa'imin Rubba qa'imin What's a qa'im? Qa'im is a stander. Someone who's standing. Rubba qa'imin. Many a stander. Something like that. So, if I translate it, yani rubba as many, and qa'im literally means a stander. Many a stander. Rubba qa'imin. But maybe it could be translated in another way or a better way. Havuhu min qiyamihi at-ta'ab. Havuhu his share. Min qiyamihi. Min min qiyamihi. From his qiyam, his standing, his share from his standing. 
is at the top. Exhaustion. So, Ruba Koi mean many a stander, Havuhu mean Kiami Itaab, his share from his standing is exhaustion. That means there's many people their prayer has no reward, or there's many people their prayer is not acceptable, might not be valid, or could be valid without reward. So, Ruba Koi mean. That's the shahid here, if you want. But we have another benefit here. Min qiyamihi. Notice here, min qiyamihi. The kasra is on the meme. But that's not the last letter. Or is it the last letter? It is the last letter of this word. And that ha there, that's a suffixed pronoun. His standing. So qiyam is mudaf. And the ha is mudaf ilayhi. And mudaf ilayhi is always going to be in genitive state. Majroor. So then this ha is actually a full-blown noun. The pronoun is a full-blown noun. Really, the pronoun is a very powerful noun. Okay. So, min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba wa al ba wa al kaf wa al lam al ba like you know when you say Bismillah. Bismillah. So. The bat, that's half job. Okay. And this word right here is originally ism. And the alif was removed due to frequent usage. But sometimes the alif would be there. Sometimes you'd write this like this. You still pronounce it bismi. Bismi Rabbik. In the name of your Lord. But when you say Bismillah, you remove the alif. In the name of Allah, because of frequent usage. That's a frequent rule in Arabic. Frequent usage. So that's it. Bismi. Why there's a kasra on the word ism? Because of the bat. Harf ja. So the word ism is, this word ism here, is called ism majroor. Genitive noun. Bi harf jar. It's genitive noun by the prepositional particle. Yani, ism majroor means object of the preposition. In this context, it does. So he said, "Mean wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa ruba wal ba'u wal kafu wal lam al kaf." That means like. You say, for example, "Zaydun ka asad ka asadin." Zaydun ka asadin. Kaf here means like. Zayd is like a lion. Like an asad. And lamb, you say, for example, like you know, 
Alhamdulillahi Alhamdulillahi The praise is for God Lillahi This was originally a lamb Connected to the name of Allah This Lillahi originally is a lamb Connected to the name of Allah But then he gets condensed Now I'm not going to go through the steps So you say Alhamdulillahi Then it gets condensed in writing So you notice here He said Walba'u walkafu wallam Let's go back to the metin Wahiya min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba walba'u walkafu wallam You noticed, insha'Allah, that ba and kaf and lam, these are the names of letters. Why did he use the name of the letter? Why didn't he say B, for example? Or Li? Because the rule is, whenever a word in Arabic is made of a single letter, Whenever a word in Arabic is made of a single letter, then the name of that word is the name of the letter. So, ba is that ba with the kasra. So, you're not going to say b, you're going to say al ba and kaf and lam. But if the name of the word, yani if the word is more than one letter, then the name of that word is the pronunciation of that word. So, min is made of two letters. So, you say min. So, what's the name of this particle? Its name is its pronunciation. Min. And ila, and an, and ala. So, all of these are names. Mean wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa ruba wal ba that's the name of this particle wal kaf and the name of that particle wal lam the name of that particle wa huruf al qasam and the swearing particles and you notice here there is definitely a dhamma here huruf wa huruf al qasam unlike up there where we changed it we said that's a mistake. It wasn't wahuruful khafud, it was wahurufil khafud. So how did it switch? Why is hurufi here and is hurufu there? It switched here. And you say wahia. Switch there. That reset the sentence. That's where the sentence was really reset. Wahia, because now he wants to talk about huruf al khafud. So the meaning is, he says, wa aqusamuhu thalatha. The divisions of Arabic speech are three by technical definition a noun, a verb, ismun, wa fi'lun, wa harfun. Ja'ali ma'na, yes, with a dhamma. Dhamma, dhamma, falismu for dhamma, yes. Yorafu bil khafdui. So we start with the kasra because of this bat. Bil khafdui, wa tanwini, wa dukhuli, wa dukhuli al alifi wa lam, wa hurufi. So all that's following from the bat. The last one was wa hurufi al khafud. The particles of yeah, the prepositional particles. Well, he and they are this resets the sentence right here. So this here uh, is actually fi mahali rafa. It's in the nominative slot. This pronoun here is in the nominative slot. That's a muqtada. 
This pronoun is a mubtada. Uh, yani, this here, right here, is the subject of a nominal sentence. So, wa here, then we need a khabar. So, whatever is the khabar is going to be marfor also. Min. So min here, this word is in the nominative slot fi mahal rafa because it's khabar. So it's like there's a dhamma there. It's in the slot of something that would take a dhamma. Hiya is, and then min, and then all these that follow. Wa hiya min wa ila wa an wa ala wa fi wa rubba wal ba'u. That's why there's dhamma here. Wal kafu. Wal lamu. And wa hurufu. Swearing particles. The swearing particles are wow, like you say. Wallahi. Why you say wallahi? You don't say wallahu or wallaha when you want to swear. Because that wow is actually not and that wow that wow is a swearing particle. It's a different wow. Wallahi or the bat you say also to swear. Bilahi. Bilahi, I swear by Allah. Wallahi, I swear by Allah. Or I swear to God. Wallahi, I swear to God. Bilahi, I swear by God. But that's not saying bat. That's not B means by. That is the swearing particle. So there's more than one bat in Arabic. And you say, Tallahi. Tallahi, I, I swear to God, but with astonishment. Ta is swearing particle, but it has astonishment. So the astonishment doesn't translate unless you somehow translate it. Like exclamation point or something like that. Wallahu alam. So we'll stop there. Do you have any questions? Question, when was punctuation introduced? Like, comma, semicolon, etc. I don't know exactly when, but it's recent. From the strictest understanding, is non-classical class, non Arabic considered Arabic? Uh, or what just resembles Arabic? I haven't heard that it's Arabic. That's a good question, though. If it's not Arabic, but it sometimes might be called Arabic, then it would be a figure of speech. But I haven't heard. What is the best way to increase the mufradat in the Arabic language? Be in an Arabic speaking environment. And study too. Uh, if a person took a metan in Arabic or two or three, then this is a great way to increase your vocabulary. Because you're going to want to strive to know the meanings of these words. Let's say the person is not an Arab, doesn't know Arabic, I mean. He doesn't know Arabic. But he took a metan. He can read the Arabic. And he's interested in the knowledge. And he took a metan. Yeah, and he, and he gave it some, some attention. He gave, he dedicated time to it in his life. then he's going to want to know what all the words mean. So, then.
take what we read in Qatrul Nada. We, we were reading the explanations. There's lots of words in there. Did you have more questions? <coughs> the last one listed. What is the best way to increase mufradat in Arabic language? Which al-lughatul amiyah resembles al-lughatul khusha? You're asking me what uh, region has slang closest to classical Arabic? I don't know, but I heard Yemen. Uh, Moroccan, I cannot understand it. And also like Syrian, that's Lebanese and Syrian, it's like pretty much the same thing. I'm sure they have the differences. Uh, I can understand it to a degree. But yeah, I find it's far though. But not as far as Moroccan. And Egyptian, I don't really understand it. Unless maybe if I listen hard, I have to like really concentrate. You said, I have heard in the marketplaces they laugh at a person when they use classical Arabic. Uh, maybe, but I used to always talk to people in Fusha. I refused to speak uh, Amiya. I didn't used to listen to it. When I would hear people talking in Amiya, I would ignore it on purpose. I saw one of the university students before I got into the university. He didn't know some things that were Fusha or Amiya. MashaAllah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu alla ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.